Yes, I used to be the national security advisor to the Prime Minister of Israel. I told them, I've been to Tunisia many times. You know who Mr. Zarouk is? We did the change. We actually caused the change in Sudan. Mrs. Karoui was there too. Uh, Ghazi was there. We had an um, interesting conversation. Incompetent and sorry to say also stupid. There were two contracts, by the way. Nabil and Salwa Karui trust account came straight from there, 150,000. It's provable. She, the wife, made it. It was made only last week, by the way, after they demanded that uh, that thing. Chief lawyer of the United States Justice Department, Clara, calls. We're trying to help everybody right now in Tunis to get out of the mess by bringing in the Americans, trying to uh, trying to work everything out. And again, we're not doing it for money. We're not doing it for anything. We're trying to clear the mess. I can help him with the Muslim Brotherhood. And uh, it would be good to create a coalition. We, we presented it to him. And he said it's a good idea because this will stabilize Tunisia if we do a coalition that would have both. Um, to uh, we were invited to go see him by uh, by the by himself through a through a middleman that lives in Canada uh, we spent um, we spent two days when I say we I mean my assistant and myself Demi she was there with me uh, we spent uh, two days with him we were staying at the Four Seasons Hotel in Tunisia, and then the first day we met him at a house that he said it's his business um, center, very nice house on the beach in Tunis. And uh, basically, uh, he, wanted, he was sure 100% sure that he was going to win the election and he's going to become president. And he wanted to hire us, not for the election. He wanted to hire us to help him uh, create a new Tunisia, according to him. When I first met him the first day, he was very emotional because he said the anniversary of his son's uh, death was coming up, it was close by and thing. And then his brother was there and his team of, of people were there. We had a very nice conversation. We spent hours together talking about the possibilities of uh, creating his presidency as a peace presidency in the region. He wanted us to uh, put together the warring sites in Libya to bring to Tunis. 
and you wanted to call it, uh, uh, create a peace center in Tunis after his son's name. Uh, his brother was also there very emotional about the matter and they said if you if anybody can do it you guys can do it and uh, we were talking then about mm, doing a meeting between um, the two warring sides in Libya and Moscow with the supervision of President Putin he said why can't we uh, because he was so sure that he was going to win in the first round, why can't we wait and bring them here and invite President Putin to come? That's on the one side of it. On the other side of it, uh, he wanted to get uh, get uh, Tunis, uh, Tunisia out of the French orbit and bring it into the, uh, the orbit of the United States. He was an Anglophone. He spoke English. His brother spoke English. The people he worked with spoke English. Okay, this this was the first. Uh, this is to set the how the meetings started. It was very emotional, very practical, very interesting thing. But. Right off the bat, he says, I do not have the right people. The people around me are not, not very good. I told him, I've been to Tunisia many times. Tunisian people are very smart, very educated. I'm sure we can find a whole team to help you. And. Um, that was his um, thing. And he was impatient to get started. And we were talking about very different, different subjects that we can work with. That was the first day. Second day, uh, we were invited to his house for dinner. Demi and I were there. That's the day the first contract was signed. There were two contracts, by the way. There was a contract signed by Mr. Nabil directly? No, no. Let me explain. Uh, the first contract, he wanted it with our UK affiliate. We have a company in England that works with us. It was signed by me. And not, sorry, not by me. It was signed by our UK director on the one side and by Mr. Yusuf Zarouk on the other side, who was there with him at the house. They were all together there. You know who Mr. Zarouk is? Yes. Okay. And um, that was the first contract. Anyway, it was very pleasant evening. We even had the best, uh, very good sushi. <laughs> they thing. Uh, Mrs. Karoui was there too. Uh, Ghazi was there. We had an um, interesting conversation. The first contract was signed there, and uh, they were, and it called for a payment of a million. US dollars. The first contract is exactly a mirror of the contract that was published. Now, we'll get into detail, I think. And the evening finished only because I had to go with them to the airport. We had a 2.10 2 a.m. Air France flight to Paris. So we had to leave. So the evening was very long, very interesting, and we were talk. He was talking of his vision of Tunisia after he becomes president, and he again he was sure that on the first round he will win. And he showed me the polls at the time. There were 
33, 34% for him, and the closest one was 16% behind. Um, and, but I also explained to him that Tunisia, in my view, is also a conservative country. And I used the word, you should be more Muslim <laughs> or traditional. Yes? And, but you have to have young people around you, people that know things, but you should also be more traditional because Tunisia is a traditional country. Um, and um, he approached us, we believe, because, not believe, he also said so, because we have consultancy agreements in Sudan and in Libya. But in Sudan, it, it was very interesting at the time, he said, you showed how successful you were in Sudan. Because we did the change. We actually caused the change in Sudan. Okay. Anyway, so, um, yeah, we got to know each other closely over two days. And then, after I came back to Montreal, the f there was at least six, seven times a day talking on the phone back and forth here with him over things, and he kept on, and he wouldn't say why on the phone. He said, I want you back in the next two, three days. I, I agreed, okay, no problem. As I was in the airport in uh, Trudeau, about to leave to Tunisia, I got a call saying he was arrested. Please don't come today. Okay, fine. Uh, but Demi did go a day later. I wanted her to see what's going on. Yeah, did go a day later. Now, next thing that occurred, we said that we could help him in the United States right now. But to do this, we have to show some sort of payment and so on and so forth. He, first of all, is through his lawyer and through the middleman, they said, please take the contract and put it under your, your name because it's to make it more, thing, which we agreed to. But since he was in jail, they found a gentleman, they said he's his representative that will sign the contract by him. Yeah, that's correct. They said they will sign, no problem. Asking Mohammed would have been in Tunisia. Sorry? Is Tunisian man Mohammed Is he a Tunisian? Yes, he is a Tunisian man, they said. I never met him. But he is a Tunisian man, and they said he is his representative just because he's in jail. He'll sign the contract. Okay. No, no, no. I've never met him. Okay. Then, after the contract was exchanged, they demanded that they uh, that we register the contract and start working in the United States right away now we explained to them that there's a million dollar payment there and it isn't because of the money it was because there's a US law that says if there's a amount you have to register it with the government and so on and so forth. They called back and said, 
they don't have the money. And I remind everybody that on the first day when I, uh, w after meeting them, I told Demi privately that these guys don't have any money and it's nonsense that he's a billionaire and this and that and thing. It's all nonsense. But he's, he has a, he's very charismatic. He can change Tunisia. We can help him change Tunisia for the better. And he can westernize Tunisia with a Muslim character. I keep on repeating that thing. Now, uh, and also, he was worried about the fact that I'm originally from Israel, and I explained this to everybody. Yes, I used to be the national security advisor to the Prime Minister of Israel, but I broke with him off because after the Oslo peace process, which I was the author of, one of the authors of, they didn't go along to, with the peace deal with the Palestinians, so I, I left. Okay. But I have nothing to do with the Israeli government, or neither does this company. Okay. And um, we really were excited to help him change the face of Tunisia. And uh, okay, what they did is they agreed. They said we have two hundred fifty thousand to send, so you can register. I said no problem. Send. We'll accept it. We'll we'll go ahead. They paid two hundred fifty thousand and three payments to our lawyer in the United States. Him. He happens to be here. He didn't come for you. He was here for uh, another meeting. Another meeting. Okay, but he's our lawyer in the United States, and he's also takes the money. He registered the contract with the United States Department of Justice in a unit called FARA. Okay the second contract and they demanded that he even think they demanded that it becomes public immediately they demanded it down from Tunis uh, the, the lawyer and one of his financial people Okay. And uh, the last time I saw the lawyer was last week in Paris. Which day was it in Paris? I don't remember, but it was last week in Paris. And uh, they were very happy. They said you should move quickly and think and so on and so forth. The idea now was to get him an invitation to come to the United States to, to meet important people in the United States because that would create pressure to let him out of jail. Suddenly, out of the blue, suddenly they keep after all this was being done, everything was moving well, they start, this contract is a fraud. This contract never existed. No contract existed. We don't know who Dickens and Manson is. Uh, yeah, no, whatever, uh, uh, fraud. The first thing that happened 
is the chief lawyer of the United States Justice Department, Farah Kaltz. And we know, they know us for many years, or so. And we went through everything with them. They said, okay, thank you. They said, thank Apparently, when the contract became public, they freaked out. How do you say freaked out in French? Uh, freaked out. They didn't know how, the people around them did not know how to handle it. And I reminded everybody, all the people around him were incompetent. He put a team together quickly because he, he thought at the time he didn't have time, but, but they were completely incompetent and sorry to say also stupid. By lying like this, they shot themselves in the foot, foot by doing all this. Lying, 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 lying. And I'm really sorry about this because I would like to help him and we're still working on helping him in the United States. And I told everybody today, they st still keep on calling, yes? I told everybody today that if, if they stop the nonsense, we will continue helping, we will help, and uh, hopefully we might even get a result. Okay, but they have to behave, tell the truth, I think. And no matter what the Tunisian government is going to do to them, I think now that the U.S. government is fully aware of what's going on, the truth is the only protection they can have. And the payments were made. <laughs> I didn't go into the Nabil Karoui, uh, Nabil and uh, what's the name of Salwa? Yeah, Nabil and Salwa Karoui trust account came straight from there, 150,000. It's provable. She, the wife made it. It was made only last week, by the way, after they demanded that uh, uh, that uh, thing. Sorry? You know why we're doing this? We're continuing the relationship? We're trying to help everybody right now in Tunis to get out of the mess by bringing in the Americans trying to uh, trying to work everything out. And again, we're not doing it for money, we're not doing it for anything. We're trying to clear the mess. And uh, I hope we'll be able to help. Il est maintenant au présent. Yes. Sorry? He's still in prison. There are a few days left before the second round. I know, but it isn't a thing. If the Americans, if the Americans will uh, put enough pressure, we're looking. Uh, things could change. Work with Sorry? the Americans to put pressure on the Tunisians to free Mr. Karim. Also to free him, 
because that without freeing him it would not be a fair election but also to help clean the mess up not me the American government together with the Tunisian government and we're trying to do that we did not cut the relationship there's nothing uh, really positive for the company but we would like yes it would be positive if Tunisia comes out of this okay <laughs> Sorry? No, we did not. And we, even if we would have, uh, we would have refused them. Because, uh, see, see, but I want to say something which uh, is very interesting. Even the first day I met him, I explained to him that I could help him with the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, it would be good to create a coalition with him. He, Do you have the power to do that? I have uh, connections in the Muslim Brotherhood movement, yes. And uh, especially the one that st starts in Sudan. <laughs> Okay, just uh, just so you know. Okay, but um, we we presented it to him, and he said it's a good idea because this will stabilize Tunisia if we do a coalition that would have both uh, things. And he was sure, hundred percent, that he would win on the first round. It is, yes, yes, it is possible and it would be good because there will be the traditional side of Tunisia plus the more progressive uh, Western side to it will make both sides workable, happy. And sorry, we have to see what happens with him first, and what happens with the United States position first before we push that. But the Americans know about the position, and they're happy with it. And they're happy with it because um, because that always works in that region because people are traditional, and but but also there are many young people that want to go out west, so you have a balance of the two things. Yes, and I really hope that we can do help and any other questions vous avez travaillé en Libye par exemple est-ce que Mr. Carvey il il était derrière ça il y avait des collections pour que vous entriez en Libye sorry no. did uh, you work in Libya was Mr. Karouli also involved with that? And did he have connections and pushed you? No, yeah. no, 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 no. Not at all. He hired us because he knew we were working in Libya and he knew we were working in Sudan. But he was not yet involved, no. Parce que vous avez un mot pour le peuple tunisien qui va voter après cinq jours. Do you have a word for the Tunisian people who will vote in five days? I, I tell everybody, you have to vote your conscience, but if uh, Nabil Karoul will be president, he'll be a very good president. I believe so, from the uh, times that we met him. I'm not doing a propaganda thing for him, but 
And uh, but he, I believe, he could be a good president if, if he replaces all the team around him. The team around him are completely incompetent and sorry to say stupid as well. I don't use that word lightly and um, and they all have to be removed and I, he mentioned it to me on the first day we met and I explained to to these young people who are smart they're educated we can look for young people from both sides of the thing there's no problem but I don't know how he was able to he picked one after the other that are uh, Enfin, maintenant, vous avez parlé, il doit connaître beaucoup de choses, parce qu'il y avait des choses ambiguës, floues, des dits, des contredits. Maintenant, je crois que la, ré la réalité est là. Et chacun va choisir qu'est-ce qu'il veut et le président qu'il veut. Thank you. Thank you very Merci. much. Okay.